Alright, so here's the thing. I still see many people pressing the volume down and the power button to take screenshots. Well, there's an easier way. Just swipe your palm over the screen and that's it. The phone is gonna take a screenshot. So this method of taking screenshots is easier and faster. Now, if you wanna quickly blur something in your screenshots, tap on the edit button and select the pixelated pen. Choose the size of the pixels and then blur the parts of your screenshots that you don't want other people to see. And this is going to be very useful when you want to share your screenshots with someone, but you want to hide specific details. Okay, so I've got an old photo of my grandfather and you can see that it's in pretty bad shape. It's torn from the top right edge and the photo itself is pretty worn out. And I'm pretty sure that many of you guys are going to have old damaged photos like these. So I'm going to show you how to fix this old damaged photo and turn it into something like this using your Samsung smartphone. So let's start. All right. So the first thing you want to do is take a photo of the old damaged photo and you want to take it in such a way so that there are no reflections. This is perfect. So after taking the photo, you want to head on into the gallery and then open the photo in the built in image editor. And here, the first thing we're going to do is crop the photo. So that looks perfect and we are gonna save this. So next, we're gonna open the photo in the generative edit tool. And from here, we're gonna select and remove the areas around the torn part of the photo. So just like that and now we're gonna generate. And as you can see, that kinda restores our photo. That is unbelievable and awesome. I honestly did not think this would work but yeah, it actually does. And before we take a printout, let's crop the photo from the right side so that it looks more like the original one. So that looks perfect. And now we can take a printout of this photo on a 4 into 6 paper and that's gonna make the photo look identical to the old one. And if you have a printer that's on a Wi-Fi network, well, you can print your photos directly from your phone. It's super easy and convenient. So check this out. That is amazing and obviously it's not perfect but it is far better than the one that's torn. So that's how you can easily restore old torn and damaged photos using your Samsung smartphone. Now, you can actually take things further by swiping up and selecting remaster. And this is gonna enhance the photo, making it sharper and clearer. You can clearly see that it makes quite a bit of difference. Also, let me show you a little trick. So what we're gonna do is head on into the image editor and this time we're gonna remove all the colors from the photo by desaturating it and then we are gonna save it. So now when you swipe up, you're gonna see an extra button which will let you recolorize your photos. And there you go. So just like that. I like the fact that there is still a vintage vibe to the photo even after recolorizing it. But I still prefer the original grayscale photo because it looks more authentic to the era. Still though, it's an amazing tool and I want you guys to try this out with your own vintage photos and let me know in the comments how it worked out for you. Alright, so since we are already in the gallery, I would highly recommend that you tap on the search button and here, you're gonna see faces of people whose pictures you've taken and tapping on them will show you every photo they are in. Super useful, right? Now, if you wanna take things further, you can add their names to their respective faces. Like, this is my photo so I'm gonna type Charlie. And this is gonna let the phone know that this face belongs to Charlie. And one big advantage of doing this is that this will make it super easy to search for photos of people using the built-in search engine of the phone. So here, I can just type my name and the phone will show every photo that I'm in. Now you see how useful this feature is? And this search engine is actually super smart. You can search for specific photos in your gallery. Like if we type dogs, it's gonna show us photos of dogs that are in the gallery. And you can even be more specific. So if we type beagle, it's gonna show pictures of beagles. That is awesome. Type in interior and it's gonna show pictures that you've taken inside your house. And this thing will also search for text in your photos. So let's search for the word individuals because I remember taking a photo of a document with the word individuals in it. And yeah, there it is. There's the word individuals in this photo. 
That is awesome. So this is how you can make one UI work for you and not stress yourself out looking for photos in your gallery. All right, so picture this. You're browsing the web or Instagram in this case on this phone and you find something interesting that you want to send over to your other smartphone. Like, I want to send the text that's in this photo onto the other phone. So what we are going to do is take a screenshot and then press on the T button. And you'll see that the phone highlights the text and now we can select and copy the text. And now we'll be able to paste the same text that we copied on this phone. So just like that. So that is awesome. And this feature is called continue on other devices, which allows you to share the clipboard across all your Samsung devices. And you'll have to enable this by going into the settings, connected devices, and from here, enable continue on other devices. Now keep in mind for this feature to work, both the devices must be signed in into the same Samsung account. They also must be on the same Wi-Fi network and have their Bluetooth switched on. Now, one of the best things about this feature is that it also works with photos. So for example, I want to send this photo over to my friend, but the messaging app is on my other phone. Well, no problem. All you need to do is open the photo in the gallery, tap on these three dots and then select copy to clipboard. And now on the other phone, you can long press and then paste. And that's it. Do you see how useful this feature is? And yes, this also works with WhatsApp. So this is something that you must absolutely enable if you have two or more Samsung smartphones. Now, did you know that you can collaborate and work on a document together with your friends or colleagues or pretty much anyone with a Samsung smartphone using Samsung Notes? So you can see any changes I make here also reflect on the document that's on the other phone. And this does not even require you to be on the same Wi-Fi or have the same Samsung account. It just works. So let me show you how. All right, so there are two ways you can start a collaboration. You can choose to share the note that you're already working on by tapping on these three dots, then share note, then select share as a single note. And from here, select share link. And the phone is going to generate a link, which you can share with up to 10 people who have a Samsung Galaxy. So let's send the link over to this phone through WhatsApp, which is a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And once we open the link on the S10 Plus, you'll see that it automatically integrates itself with Samsung Notes. And now whatever we edit on this phone is also gonna appear on our primary phone, as you can see. And keep in mind the S10 Plus is not even on the same Samsung account. So this is how you can invite two or more people to work on the same document in Samsung Notes. Super useful, right? And lastly, to add more participants, tap here and then tap on the plus button. You can also start a collaboration through Scratch by tapping on the hamburger menu in Samsung Notes and then selecting shared notes and then from here, create a new shared note. You'll get the same two options to create a link, or invite someone from your phone book or type in someone's Samsung account email address. So this is a feature that you must absolutely try out on your Samsung Galaxy. And speaking of the Notes app, let me show you a feature that many people don't know. So check this out. I'm going to write down a math equation and you'll see that the phone will actually solve it for us. So there you go. And you can switch this feature on by tapping on these three dots. And here you'll see an option of switching on the math solver. And this can be very useful if you want to quickly do some math while typing out a note, but you don't want to open the calculator. Now, did you know that you and your friend can listen to music together simultaneously on two different headphones or earbuds? And setting this up is super easy. Let me show you. So you'll need to start by connecting yours and your friend's headset or earbuds to your phone. This one is already connected, so we are going to connect the other one. And once you've got both connected to your phone, drop down the quick panel and select media output. And from here, select both of the headsets. And that's it. Now when you play music, it's going to play back on both of the headsets. And you've even got the option to control the volume for the individual Bluetooth headsets. Awesome, right? 
So this is how you and your friend can listen to the same song together using two different Bluetooth headsets. Guys, if you forget to bring along the charger of your Galaxy Watch and if you are running low on battery, well, you can charge it using your phone. So to charge the watch, all you need to do is drop down the quick panel all the way and from the quick settings, you want to switch on a feature called wireless power share. There it is. And once you get this message, flip your phone around and place your watch or your Galaxy Buds in the middle of the phone, just like that. And you'll see that it starts charging. And right now it is using the battery of your phone to charge the watch. But we can go ahead and plug the charger into the phone. And now it's going to charge the watch using the power that is coming in from the adapter. You can see it's using about 5 watts to charge the watch. And this thing will even allow you to charge other smartphones using the wireless power share feature. So that is awesome. However, there is one downside to this. You will not be able to charge the new Galaxy Watch 7 or Galaxy Watch 8. It just shows that the charger is incompatible. I'm not sure why, but it might be due to the design of the sensor array at the back of the Galaxy Watch 8. However, everything else seems to work just fine. So yeah, it's an awesome little feature. And here's a tip for you guys. So to add widgets to your home screen, you don't actually have to pinch in and then head on into widgets. Instead, what you can do is open the app drawer and long press an app icon. For example, we're gonna long press the calendar icon and then tap on widgets. And this is gonna show you every widget the app has to offer. And from here, you can choose to add whichever one you like. The advantage of this is that this method shows you the widgets that are specific to the app. And it's a great way to find out if an app has its own set of widgets. Pretty cool, right? Alright, so thank you for watching and you know the drill. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time.